Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. I'm back with another video. And today we're gonna to talk about the sampler within Bitwig. The sampler in Bitwig is one of the most powerful sound design tools available on the market today. That's the claim I'm making. Um, and I'm gonna go over why that is. Let's first talk about a little bit about why it is, um, you know, what's maybe missing from it first. So it doesn't have any advanced time stretching and picks shifting algorithms like Z-Plane. Even though you can have that within Clips, it is uh, in Bitwig for Clips, it's not in the sampler, which is unfortunate, I think. But that's, I think, the only weakness of it. You can do some time stretching using the textures mode, and that's pretty, um, it, it kind of works. It's not super high quality, but you can get away with some pretty cool stuff with it. However, um, outside of that, we have pretty much everything you could want from a sampler, but it's done in a pretty simple layout where it's very accessible and it's very easy to use. But that's not really, uh, the feature set in itself isn't really what makes it an amazing sound design tool. It's the context in which you can use it and the things you can access that makes it ridiculous. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. So let's get into some of the things that we can do. I'm going to um, go into a sound that I made um, that you can access in Bitwig right now if you have the demo or if you own it. It's called uh, Music Box. And let's, um, let me just play it real quick. Anyway, so I love the sound of this thing. It has kind of a, it sounds realistic, but maybe a little bit like hyper-realistic, like HDR, like kind of artificially realistic in a sense. And that is because of, I, I used a sample, but the sample pretty much sounds nothing like the actual sound. Uh, let's listen to the sample here real quick. Uh, so not uh, not the most pleasant sound, and we're using the sample to modify other things to kind of excite some other things. So let's go through the different components of this sound. So first off, we have the sample, and it's going through a very short envelope, so we're only hearing a very short little burst of sound from it. And then it's going through this comb filter, which is acting as an exciter and giving us kind of a physical modeling type sound, and then. Um, it's going into the output. So let's uh, listen to just this physical model kind of sound. Now you might hear in the background, there's like this mechanical noise and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's a little bit separate. I can turn that mechanical noise down all the way for now. So um, that's one of the sounds, and I have another routing here that I'm doing where I'm using that same burst to phase modulate this triangle wave. And this gives us this sound. So that's kind of the main meat of the sound. But if I'm not phase modulating it with the sample, it sounds like this. So it's just a triangle wave sounds a little bell like but it's not nearly as uh, nice sounding in my opinion so let's put that back in now this sort of thing taking a sample and using it to phase modulate a, um, a waveform is pretty rare within the uh, industry there's not a lot of synthesizers that can do that there are some but it is rare and the fact that we have a full functioning sampler with multi-sample capability and everything that we can use to modulate uh, different things, that's really amazing. Now this last sound is just simply right off the sampler, right off this envelope, and it's just adding a little bit of a clunk to it. And what we're doing here is we are pitch shifting across the keyboard only 25%. And that is a good when we're trying to simulate something acoustic. We, um, not all the components will pitch 
the same way, like if you're talking about the combs, uh, like one of those music combs, uh, it's, it, it's, they're all mounted to the same piece of metal and the, the, the resonant pitch of the kind of metal brace is going to be different than the pitch of the, uh, the actual comb teeth. In any case, it's good to be able to, to pitch things differently when you're trying to simulate something. So you put it all together and you get that. So again, this is a creative use of sampler where you can use it as, use sample content as an exciter, use sample content as a phase modulation uh, source, and just use it directly all in one patch. Now let's get into the, the movement sound here. I'm gonna turn that up. And uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and turn off the music box part so that we can just hear the sound of that mechanical device. And let's look at what I'm doing here. So what we have is the movement sound is on this um, layer within the FX layer. And it is actually all done on this other grid that is an FX grid, but I didn't have to. I could have done it on a poly grid and it would have worked just as well. So what's really cool, another great feature of the sampler, especially, well, exclusively the sampler within the grid is that we can trigger it with any source. So here I'm using an LFO to trigger three different samplers. Um, what happens is whenever this signal here reaches over uh, 0.5, it will trigger the sample. And then um, it also triggers the envelope. Let's listen to just this one by itself. And it's a little light here. I'm going to add a uh, amp here to make it a bit louder for us so we can hear it well. There we go. So that's just this one. And you can hear it ramp up and ramp down. And that's because I'm using this modulator here to turn up the frequency of this, this clock source so that it ramps up. And then when I release it, it, it slows it down. We're using the same clock to also manipulate the, uh, the filter here so that we can shape the sound in real time. So being able to trigger it and shape this LFO all with this one clock source, that's really unique. Um, and you're not gonna be able to do that in most other samplers. So this is a really powerful technique to use to make something like mechanical sounds or a lot of other things too. Um, and then what I did was I took the same signal and I divided it uh, into one fourth of the speed and used it to make another sound. Now this is actually just like a crash symbol that I modified. And this one is a, a closed hat. Let's listen to this closed hat here. So it's one fourth the speed and it's just clicking this off pretty regularly. I pitched it up a lot. And then this last one is uh, a do I don't know it's the same closed hat and it's a slightly different pitch and it's one sixth the speed of the other one. Let's listen to that. So when we put them together, we get this kind of somewhat complex mechanical clock type sound. Now I also used a um, a random generator to change the starting point of this sample so that it didn't sound too robotic because if we get the exact same sample over and over again, it sounds artificial. But if you make some minor variations in the start time, it makes it sound more uh, organic. So, um, and then here I used a shift so that the timing of, of, of this one would be a little bit um, off beat from the other one. So it's, they, they're not ever clacking at the same exact time. Anyway, the, the, this is possible because we can trigger things from a common clock source and we can take that clock source and we can, um, change its speed all at once. 
So this is a, a very unique sort of situation. I, I I wouldn't know how to do this in some of the other uh, synthesizers I have uh, or or samplers I have, if if it's even possible, which would be arguable. Like there might be some ways to do it, but yeah, it would be much harder. Anyway, uh, so you can see how these are some in unconventional ways to use a sampler to get some pretty cool results and have that kind of um, realistic edge to it, but you, you have this unlimited control. And for sound design, this is exactly the sort of thing that uh, I want to do. When I was con coming up with the idea for the sound, I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to pull it off, but it turns out that yeah, you can pretty much pull off anything in the grid. Uh, and it was easier than I thought it was going to be to put it all together. So in any case, um, yeah, there's that. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Also, um, if you're interested in me showing more, because this is a little bit of just stretching the surface of what you can do with the sampler specifically, I have a few other videos talking about some things you can do with a sampler and I'll try to put some links to those in the description uh, so you can see a little bit more. But if you would like me to go over some more things, let me know in the comments if this is something that's interesting to you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.